Hi guys. Happy Sunday. Um, normally I'd be doing a song right now, but instead of doing a song in lieu of Mother's Day, I decided to read a story instead. Now, I don't have any books about moms. However, every mother was once a daughter. So I would like to read one of my favorite stories, My Child, My Princess by Beth Moore. Um, it's definitely a really good story. So even the parents, if you guys want to stick around, you might uh, learn something yourselves. Um, so our story starts off. I'll try my best to show you guys the pictures here first. There we go. Um, let's see if we do it this way. This way. There we go. Just like that. Once upon a time, a young princess became angry with her father, the king. The king had required her obedience to clean her room, but she had countless servants. Why should she pick up after herself? I know what I'll do, the princess said to herself. I'll teach everyone a lesson. I'll run away from home and leave my room a mess just like this. She searched through her dresser drawers for old clothing and pitching what she did not want on the floor. Finding the clothing she wanted to dress up in, she disguised herself as one of the village's peasant girls. Then she quietly slipped out of the castle's secret door. The princess knew her father, the king, would not discover her missing for several hours because he was attending important business. Walking a short distance, the, pr the princess soon found herself in a neighborhood lined with markets and merchants. On a narrow back street, she met a group of children playing stickball. She thought to herself, they are having much more fun than I ever have. I'm tired of being a princess. I shall be like them. It wasn't long before the children asked her to play stickball with them. She was so happy, the princess quickly caught on to their game. She elbowed whoever got in her way, just like them. She cursed when she missed the ball, just like them. And when she fell, plop, she fell straight into the mud, just like them. Suddenly, a young girl appeared on the corner of the street. She called to the children, Come, hurry, something really big is happening on Main Street. Sticks flew into the air, and the children ran towards Main Street. The princess was quite proud of herself, for she could run very fast, just like them. When the children reached Main Street, they reached a crowd of people who were ooing and aahing over something. The children shoved and pushed their way through the crowd only to meet the stares of the finely dressed men and women standing at the front of the group. Go away, you filthy children, one of the women said. Incensed, the princess said, I'm no filthy child, I'm a prince. Her words trailed off. Looking at the children standing around her, she thought to herself, I used to be a princess. Now I'm just like them. With new resolve, she began to elbow her way through the crowd again, purposely getting mud on the hems of the fine dresses and skirts. It's no use, one of the boys finally said. We can't get to the front of this crowd. Hurry, let's go climb that tree over there. The children hurried to the tree and just like monkeys scurried up to perch on the branches. All the children managed to climb the tree, except for the princess. Trailing behind, she reassured herself, I can climb this tree because I'm just like them. As she pulled her way to the second branch, a small limb caught the threads of her skirt and threw her off balance. Not being able to catch herself, she tumbled out of the tree and fell onto the ground with a thump. The adults turned around and peered at her with disgust. The children in the tree laughed and yelled at her, Get up here quick! It's coming! It's coming! She didn't know what was coming, nor did she particularly care at that moment. Humiliated and bruised from the fall, she wanted to cry, but she was like them, and they certainly wouldn't cry, so she cursed instead. Determined, the princess finally made her way up the street and settled insecurely on a lower branch. What are we looking for anyway, she asked. It's the king, yelled the other kids. Don't you know a king when you see one, they sneered at her. She slowly pulled herself up to the next branch and stretched to see the king. An envoy of dignitaries stood beside a lavish coach, and when the door opened, out stepped the king. So tall, so dignified, 
so royal. Hail his majesty the king, an aide announced. The crowd responded, long live the king. The dignitaries dropped to one knee and only the king was left standing. Then one of the boys in the tree whispered to the group, hey, we've got a perfect shot from here. Let's throw our best spitballs right in his face. Horror struck the princess's heart. You can't do that, she pleaded. Why not, the boys demanded. Because he's the king, she said. So what? Big deal, they said as they began to throw spitballs at the king. Stop, cried the princess. Stop, please, that's my father. The tears she had so valiantly held back earlier now spilled down her cheeks. Sure, and my dad is Abraham, they mocked her. No, I mean it. It's true. The king is my father, she pleaded. But the children just laughed harder. Look at you. You're just like us, they sneered. You don't have a father. The princess looked at her father just in time to see him wipe something from his face. He looked up into the tree as the children yelled and cursed at him. Indescribable shame filled her heart. She was sure her father had seen her, but maybe, just maybe, he hadn't recognized her. The princess jumped out of the tree and began to run. As she did, the children started to throw their spitballs at her. The princess began to run back towards the palace. She ran and ran, sobbing every step of the way, stopping to catch her breath. The princess suddenly became aware of her stinging elbows and knees. She was skinned and bleeding from the fall, and she began to cry even harder. Her heart sank, and she felt alone and very frightened. Making her way slowly back to the palace, she discovered to her horror that the secret door was now locked. She ran to the next door, but it was locked too, as was the next, and the next door after that. Oh no, she cried. I am locked out and have no place to go. The palace is no longer my home. The princess knew only the front door remained unlocked. I can't possibly use the front door, she thought. Everyone will know how foolish I've been. Everyone will look at me, and I look just like them. So she waited and waited, trying desperately to think of some way to get out of this terrible mess. Finally, too sore and too hungry to think any longer, she gave in and headed for the front door. With torn clothes, filthy hands, in a tear-streaked face, she lifted her hand and knocked once, slowly, timidly. Before she could muster the courage to knock again, the door cracked open. Hanging her head in shame, she could see only his feet, but she knew instantly that they were his feet. It was him, her dad, her father, the king. She fell at his feet and cried, I'm sorry, Daddy. I'm so ashamed of what I've done. Gently, the king knelt down beside her and pulled her into his strong, comforting arms. Come here, my child, my princess, he said. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just like them, she sobbed. Ah, my child, he said. You may have acted like them but you are not one of them. You are mine, and you will never be happy until you accept both the privilege and the responsibility that goes with belonging to me. That night, after she had, he had dressed her wounds, he tucked her into her soft bed and kissed her goodnight. He even helped her clean the mess she had left in her room. As she settled into the soft quilt, she thought about how much she liked being a princess, the daughter of a king. As the king walked out of the room, the dim night light softly illuminated his royal robe, which was now smudged with dirt. Tears filled the princess's eyes. Look what I've done to the king's robe. Never again, she whispered, apologizing to the king. Seeing her broken heart, the king turned and spoke softly. Yes, my child, 
There will be other times, but I will open the door every time you knock, and I will always love you ever again. And this story has no end. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since creation of the world. Matthew 25, 34. I have to admit, I think that's the first time I've ever read this book without crying. Um, but I absolutely love this story, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it and that you remember that no matter what you do, uh, God will always never love you any more or any less, and he will always be there anytime you knock. Happy Mother's Day.